After a young princess asks her parents why they can't put the Christmas star on their Christmas tree, her mother tells her that the star is for everyone. She adds that the star will always be there for her daughter as long as she's ready to give it her heart. Following this, she presents her daughter with a golden heart necklace as a Christmas gift. While this is happening, the king's cousin, the count, sees this and looks unhappy because he won't get the chance to become the king as long as the princess is alive. Because of this, the count hires the services of an evil witch to help make his dream come true. After the count secretly encourages the princess to go on a mission to acquire the Christmas star, the witch casts a spell to make her disappear. This leaves the king and queen devastate as they start looking around for their daughter. In the process, the queen gets really sick and eventually dies. With no luck finding his daughter, the king also curses the Christmas star because that's what the princess was chasing after. The star then disappears, and this leaves the kingdom without the special Christmas star. A while later, the king receives a prophecy that he can get his daughter back if he's able to find the Christmas star within ten years. Many years soon pass, and the king is now left with just one last year before he loses his daughter forever. On Christmas Eve of the final year, the king starts to think of what he can do to find the Christmas star, with his daughter's freedom on the line. Elsewhere, a girl named Sonia is being held captive by a band of thieves, consisting of a wicked woman and her children. While working in the house, Sonia gets scolded and warned that if she doesn't do her chores well, she won't get any food to eat. Shortly after, the woman's children come into the house with all the things they stole from their most recent robbery. As they rejoice with their mother, because the stolen items are quite valuable, they all forget that the door is still open. Sonia watches them closely and waits until they're not looking at her before she runs out of the house. The wicked woman immediately realizes what has happened, so she sends her children after Sonia. Luckily, Sonia is able to avoid getting caught, and after a while of running around, she finds herself inside a storeroom with a lot of foodstuffs. Just as she looks around, it doesn't take long before she gets caught by the thieves. However, instead of taking her away, they get distracted by the food items in the room. As they try to force Sonia to steal with them, a man named Ole comes in and sees them. He immediately alerts the guards to come over and get the thieves, while Sonia escapes. She eventually runs into the king's castle, and as she's admiring the building, she hears someone coming in through the door, so she hides. Then turns out to be the king and a couple of guards along with the count. After exchanging pleasantries, the Count introduces the King to an astrologer. He says that the astrologer is very good at what he does, and that he even knows where to find the Christmas star. The King asks the astrologer about his qualifications, and he confirms everything the Count said. As he then starts talking about where the Christmas star is, the King's dog Bruno sees Sonia and goes towards her. Because he's then disturbing the meeting, the King tells the Count to check what's wrong with Bruno. As he checks around, the Count sees Sonia and shows her to the King. He also adds that she was one of the thieves who tried to steal from the storeroom earlier. Luckily, Ola is in the room just in time, so he defends Sonia and says that she was trying to stop the thieves. The Count still calls her a thief and insists that Sonia is sent to jail. However, the King tells his guards to leave her. He also dismisses the Count and the astrologer, who he tells to begin his work and find the star before Christmas. Following this, the King tells Sonia to follow him. As they sit by a table, the king asks Sonia about her relationship with the thieves. Sonia explains that she has been staying with them for many years and that they always maltreat her because she doesn't steal with them. The king asks if she has any family or friends, but Sonia says she has none. He then tells her that he'll make sure the thieves are no longer a problem for her. As he asks where she'll go after she leaves the palace, Sonia says she's going to help the king find the Christmas star. The king says he has been trying to find it for nine years and that he's not sure of what she can do to help. Sonia then asks if he has tried to give the star his heart. The king doesn't seem to get this, but Sonia says she heard that the star is always around as long as you give your heart to it. Despite being told that she doesn't have to find anything, Sonia says she can give her heart to the star. The king then says he hopes the astrologer can find the star for him. Shortly after, he calls on a lady named Patrine to help Sonia get something to eat. While she's eating, Oli and Patrine ask Sonia if she's really serious about finding the star, and she says she is. After she's through with her food, Sonia leaves the castle with Ole and Petrina wishing her luck. Elsewhere, the king meets with the Count to ask if the astrologer can be trusted. The Count says he trusts the astrologer and that the king can be sure of success. However, when the Count returns to his office, he pays the astrologer a huge fee for his performance in front of the king. It turns out that the astrologer is an imposter, and he was only hired by the Count 
to make the king waste valuable time and miss out on the chance to bring his daughter back for the last time. As the astrologer leaves, an evil witch shows up behind the count. After she watches the count lament about how she sneaked up on him, the witch says she has heard that someone else is on the search for the Christmas star. The count tells her not to worry because the person is a little girl. However, the witch says she's not taking any chances because if anyone finds the star, the count won't get to become king and she won't be able to rule with him. As the count asks what she wants, the witch tells him to stop Sonia from finding the star. Meanwhile, Sonia has gone really far on her trip and she even seeks help from an owl, who shows her the direction to keep moving. After a while, she sees a gnome named Mose stuck in a cage. Almost immediately, the Count also appears to be getting closer to Sonia. Shortly after, Sonia rescues Mose, but they then start hearing someone coming close. Mose immediately sprays a gnome powder on Sonia to make her smaller. Together, they then hide in a tree, as the Count starts looking around to see if he can find Sonia. To be safer, Mose takes Sonia deep into the tree to where she lives. There, Sonia meets Mose's parents, who don't look so happy that their daughter brought in a human. Sonia then tells them that she's going in search of the Christmas star. Mose's parents tell her that it's so dangerous because she'll have to fly on the north wind to go towards where the star is, but they also mention that it's impossible. Just as Sonia is then about to head out, Mose's grandfather calls Mose to inform her of a way to help the human. Following this, Mose tells Sonia that her grandfather knows someone who can help her locate the North Wind. As they then head there, Mose tells Sonia that if she eventually finds what she's looking for, then she has to leave a reward for her. She says that Sonia must bring her a bowl of Christmas porridge, because it has been a long time since she had such a good meal. Sonia agrees to this, and after a while, Mose leads her to a big bear. Before Mose leaves, she helps Sonia return to her normal size after which she wakes the bear. Even though the bear initially sounds hesitant, he eventually agrees to take Sonia to the North Wind. Meanwhile, the evil witch releases her ravens to help her find Sonia and the Count, so she can have an update on what's happening. Elsewhere, the big bear drops Sonia at her destination. Before he leaves, he tells her to have faith in herself if she wants to find the star. Following this, Sonia then meets with the North Wind. After telling the North Wind that she's headed for the North Pole to see Santa, he tells her to jump down from a cliff, and she's left shocked. As she contemplates whether to jump or not, the evil witch has found her through her ravens. She also appears to the Count and tells him where Sonia is headed. Before he continues his journey, she hands him a magical broom to help him fly so he can catch up with Sonia. Just as he starts flying, Sonia also falls, and the North Wind catches her. The Count tries his best to meet up with Sonia, but the North Wind is too fast. He eventually loses control of the broom and falls down. As he tries to get back on it, the broom doesn't work again, so he breaks it out of anger. He then heads back to the kingdom to explain what happened to the evil witch, who doesn't like the fact that Sonia is still on her way to find the star. After a while, the North Wind drops off Sonia at the North Pole, and as she walks around, she sees Santa's workers preparing the gifts he'll be distributing on Christmas. Shortly after, she meets with Santa and tells him that she's looking for the Christmas star. He asks for her name, and when she tells him, he also asks if she likes receiving presents. She then shows him a golden necklace she got from her mom as a Christmas gift when she was much younger. As Santa admires her necklace, she asks him how he knows the good people who deserve gifts. He then tells her to follow him, and after walking for a while, he shows her a place with many Christmas trees. He says that everyone has a Christmas tree, and that if the tree looks beautiful, then it means the person is good. Santa shows Sonia the king's tree, and says it looks bad because the king hasn't healed since he cursed the Christmas star. Santa also shows Sonia the wretched tree belonging to the Count. As they look around, Sonia sees her beautiful tree and looks happy about it. Following this, Santa tells her to make a wish, and she wishes to find the Christmas star and take it back to the king, so he can find his daughter. However, Santa says the star never left where it was, and that the king just can't see it, because he stopped believing in it. He adds that Sonia has to believe in the Christmas star with all her heart, if she ever wants to see it. As she listens to him, Santa then tells Sonia to wish herself to go where the king placed the curse on the star. Sonia does this, and it doesn't take long before she finds herself there. Shortly after, she wishes for the Christmas star to come to her, and as it shows up, she keeps the particles in her necklace locket. As this happens, the evil witch watches her through her magic globe. She also shows it to the Count, who immediately recognizes Sonia's necklace as the same one the little princess had. The evil witch confirms that Sonia is the princess, and that their plan to kill her didn't work. She also adds that Sonia likely survived because the necklace saved her, as they wonder what to do because their plan is at risk of failing. The evil witch says she'll handle everything. 
She then disappears to where Sonia is. The evil witch ties the poor girl to a tree and takes away her necklace, after which she says she can't let Sonia ruin her plans. She then returns home and gives the necklace to her daughter, who will pretend to be the princess in front of the king. Even though the Count is unsure about this, because the king might suspect something, the evil witch convinces him that her plan will work. She also gives him a scroll and tells him to make sure the king signs it, because it's a document that will guarantee them power regardless of what happens. When the Count still seems unsure, the evil witch uses her powers to change the words on the scroll so that the king won't know what he's signing for. With this, the Count takes the witch's daughter to the king and introduces her as the princess. The king looks very happy with this, and as he sees the princess's necklace, he believes it's his daughter. He asks if she remembers how she got the necklace, but the witch's daughter lies that she has lost her memory. The king doesn't seem to care, and he organizes an event to show his daughter off to the people in his kingdom. On the day of the event, the count instructs all the guards to make sure no one except the guests is allowed in. Meanwhile, Sonia starts calling for help, and luckily, Mose hears her. After finding out what happened to the princess, he helps her so she can head to the palace. Back at the king's party, he introduces his daughter to everyone, and even though she seems quite different, the king doesn't care. The king also thanks the count for helping him find his daughter. As the count acknowledges the king's remarks, he also brings out the evil witch and introduces her as the person who always helped him. Just then, the count tells the king to sign a document that prevents him from ever cursing the Christmas star again. The king agrees to sign it, and just as the scroll is presented to him, he starts signing it. However, Sonia arrives just in time, and after sneaking past the guards, she enters the castle. The king is surprised to see her, and he introduces her to the imposter, who he calls the princess. However, Sonia says the witch's daughter can't be the princess because the Christmas star is not back yet. The king confirms this, and while the count tries to convince him that it means nothing, the witch's daughter tries to get Sonia arrested. The king stops that from happening and takes the golden necklace away from the witch's daughter, after which Sonia says it's her own. She adds that it was given to her by her mother when she was still young. The king is shocked to hear this, and to confirm if she's who she says she is, he hands her the necklace. Immediately, she touches it. The Christmas star emerges from her necklace and returns to the sky. Everyone is happy with this except the Count and the evil witch, who soon get arrested. The king then looks very happy as he lifts his daughter with joy. Shortly after, Sonia changes her clothes and the king gives her a crown. She then goes to the kitchen to get Moses' bowl of porridge, which she places outside the castle. When she returns inside, she sits at a table with her father, who has also invited Ole and Petrine to join them for a family Christmas dinner. 